In the opening chapter of Jekyll and Hyde, we are introduced firstly to the character of Mr. Utterson the lawyer. Enfield tells Utterson about how, one night at about three in the morning, he was walking home and all of a sudden he saw two figures running towards each other from separate streets. One was a small man and the other a young girl. When the two met, Enfield tells Utterson, the man trampled calmly over the child's body and left her screaming on the ground. Enfield and a doctor who stopped by to help the girl both promise to ruin the man's reputation across town unless he pays £100 to the girl's family. The man agrees and goes in through the door of the building that Enfield had pointed out to Utterson on their walk. He returns with gold and a cheque to bring the sum to £100. Enfield doesn't trust the man. He recognises the name of the person who signed the cheque, although we won't mention it to Utterson. Finally, Utterson asks Enfield the name of the man from his story and Enfield tells him that it was Mr Hyde. In Chapter 2, Utterson goes to his safe and takes from it Dr. Jekyll's will. The will makes Mr. Edward Hyde the beneficiary in the event of Dr. Jekyll's death, and what's more, it also stipulates that should Dr. Jekyll be missing for a period of at least three months, Mr. Hyde should step into his shoes and inherit his wealth. He gets his coat and heads off to see his friend Dr. Lanyon. Dr. Lanyon and Dr. Jekyll have had a disagreement of some sort and haven't spoken much. Lanyon admits that their disagreement was on some point of unscientific balderdash. Utterson begins to hang around the side streets near the door in the hope of seeing Hyde. Eventually, all his snooping pays off. Even at a distance, Utterson has almost a physical reaction of revulsion to Mr Hyde. He begins to fear for Dr Jekyll and calls around to the front of the house where Paul, the house servant, admits him to the hall. Utterson questions Paul about Hyde and learns that all the staff have orders to obey him and that he comes and goes as he pleases. The story skips forward two weeks. Utterson reminds Jekyll of the will he has in his possession and how much he disapproves of it, but Jekyll says that it really isn't that serious a situation and promises Utterson that should he wish, he could be rid of Hyde at a moment's notice. The chapter opens with the description of a terrible crime that has shaken London to its core. The maid saw a very handsome gentleman walking one way on the street and towards him a smaller man. They came together and spoke under her window. The handsome gentleman was very polite to the smaller man and it appears that a request for directions was made. The maid watched the fine gentleman and admired him as he spoke. She then recognised the second man as Mr Hyde. She also noticed that Mr Hyde held a heavy cane in his hand. She reports that Hyde did not speak a word in return to the gentleman, but in a rage clubbed him with the cane and proceeded to beat him to death. Utterson takes the police to Hyde's address in Soho, but Hyde is nowhere to be seen. When Utterson and the police look around Hyde's rooms, they notice that everything has been decorated and furnished in very good taste, but also that the place has been recently ransacked. The other half of the cane is found behind a door. In the opening of Chapter 5, Utterson asks if Jekyll has heard of Carew's murder, and when he says he has, the lawyer asks if he's hiding the murderer in his house. Jekyll says he is not, and that no more will ever be heard from Hyde. Jekyll then confides in him that he's received a letter. It is from Hyde, and confirms that he has escaped and will not be returning. Later that evening, with Mr Guest, his head clerk and a student of handwriting, Utterson attempts to analyse the letter that Jekyll had given him. Guest examines both Hyde's letter and Jekyll's dinner invitation and declares that both were written in the same handwriting, only with an attempted disguise. Utterson once again decides to visit their mutual friend Dr Lanyon, but he finds Lanyon very ill. Lanyon tells Utterson that he's had a shock and he does not think he will recover. He believes he will die in a matter of weeks. Within two weeks, Lanyon has died, and the night after the funeral, Utterson goes into his office, locks the door, and takes out a letter from Lanyon. Inside that envelope, there's another that is marked not to be opened till the death or disappearance of Dr. Henry Jekyll. On one of their Sunday walks, Utterson and Enfield happen to walk past the door that they had stopped in front of earlier in the novella. At one of the windows, looking miserable and sick, they see Dr. Jekyll. Utterson calls up to Jekyll, telling him he's looking better, but his friend replies he is not, and he believes it will all be over soon. Suddenly, mid-conversation, Jekyll's face begins to change, and a look of utter terror and despair comes over him before he quickly pulls down the blind. At the start of Chapter 8, it's evening, and Utterson is interrupted by a visit from Paul, who is clearly distressed. Paul tells him that he's afraid about something happening with Dr Jekyll. He admits to Utterson that he thinks Jekyll has been murdered. Utterson gets his coat and his hat and agrees to follow Paul to Jekyll's house. Paul takes Utterson around to the back of the house and begs him to be as quiet as possible as he wants him to hear and not be heard. They arrive at Jekyll's chamber door and Paul tells Jekyll that Mr Utterson is there to see him. A voice comes from behind the door saying he cannot see him and both Paul and Utterson return to the kitchen. Here, Paul says he believes Jekyll has been murdered because a few days previous there had been lots of shouting and crying out. 
Paul tries to explain it by saying that whatever is behind the door has been calling out for a type of medicine that Jekyll used to keep, but which they had been unable to get a hold of recently. Jekyll had become frantic to get it, sending out to chemists all over London, but not finding any that was pure enough. Now the person who has replaced Jekyll, Paul says, has been doing the same, giving orders to the staff to try different chemists for the powder. Paul takes an axe and utters a poker. The pair stand outside the door listening and decide that what they hear is not Dr Jekyll's footsteps. They knock through the door and inside find the figure of Hyde on the carpet, twitching and wearing clothes that are much too big for him. They notice a file in his hand, and Utterson realises that Hyde has taken a substance and killed himself. Chapter 9 is Lanyon's letter to Utterson. He explains that four days ago he received a letter from Jekyll, begging him for help and asking him to come to his house, where Paul would be waiting with a locksmith to break into his chambers. Lanyon is to go in alone to a specific drawer and take it to his own house. At midnight, a man calls, and Lanyon is immediately struck by how much he dislikes him. The man is desperate for the contents of the drawer. He asks for a glass and mixes some of the powders there in the room with Lanyon. The man drinks the potion and turns into Dr. Henry Jekyll. Chapter 10 consists of Henry Jekyll's letter to Utterson explaining the events of the novella. Jekyll begins by telling us about his background. He is heir to a large fortune with a desire to work and be thought well of by his friends and acquaintances. Because of this, he says, he began to hide his pleasures and regard them with a morbid sense of shame. He discusses the dual nature of humans, where we have to balance the good and bad sides of our characters, and how people restrain themselves from certain things in the name of decency or being a good person. His experiments showed him that certain chemicals could draw back the barrier between these two sides of his character, but eventually he took the potion and was full of pain, sickness and a horror of the spirit before transforming into Mr Hyde. He felt younger, happier and freer, knowing that he could do whatever he pleased. He tells all the staff in his house that they are to obey Mr Hyde, and then draws up the will, leaving everything to Hyde in case of his death or disappearance. The potion unleashes a new anger in Hyde, and it scares Jekyll. He runs into Carew and murders him. It is this act that puts Jekyll on the straight and narrow for another few months. He says to Utterson he knows how much he tried to enjoy people's company and do good in the last few months. Unfortunately, although he doesn't take a potion, he finds himself one day transforming again into Hyde. He arranges with Lanyon to get the powders from his chambers, and then goes to meet him at his house. After this, Jekyll realises he has to take the potion simply to remain as Jekyll, that Hyde has taken over completely, and he can transform without warning at any hour of the day. Jekyll and Hyde are locked in a battle for power of the body they share, and both detest and hate the other. It is in this state of despair that Jekyll spends his final weeks. He keeps drinking potions, but they have no effect and can't change him back. He is convinced that the first batch had some impurity in it that was the potent ingredient. Jekyll, at the end of the letter, says that this is the hour of his death, and he does not care what happens to Hyde afterwards.